I want to talk about this particular subject, which I have been on for last week called I Am Salty. It is, in my opinion, one of the greatest gifts that you and I can experience is the gift of leadership. Proverbs says that when you're under good leadership, people rejoice. When they're under poor leadership, their lives are in disarray. I believe a lot of us who have purchased a house is because of where you're connected to. Because leadership pushes you to go further than you've ever been before. The greatest teams are great not because they just have great players. They're great because they have great leaders. Your life will rise and fall on your own leadership. Your success in life is not solely on this, but a large part of it is your ability to follow leadership. Leadership is powerful. You can't minimize the value and the necessity of leadership. Jesus in his leadership was able to convince people to leave their companies to follow him on something they'd never seen before. You mean I got a good paying job and Jesus comes over and says, hey, I want you to come work for me. And you're like, uh, what do you do? I preach. Okay, what else do you do? Just it, just preach. Uh, how, how are we going to make it? Well, we're going to go house to house and those that receive us, praise God, and if they don't, we'll dust our feet. Okay, wait a minute. You want me to leave my fishing business to follow you to uncertainty. You got to be a pretty good leader to convince 12 people to do it. Jesus walks over and says, what is leadership? He says, leadership, if it's defined, can be this, influence, but it's also salt because leadership is salty. When you are salt, you influence things. You change the trajectory of things because you're salt. But leadership is not something that you and I just have automatically. It's something that we learn and grow into. And some of us have quit on learning and growing into leadership, but know this, the capacity of God to give you more rises and falls on your leadership. Now, I want to take you through the life of a leader who we get to see develop in front of our eyes. His name is Joseph. He, he's a powerful leader. But he started off as an immature leader. We see the stories of Joseph and the ending of Joseph. We see the ending of Peter, but Peter didn't start off as a strong leader. Being around Jesus three years taught him how to be a better leader. We grow in our leadership. I'm 37. I don't lead the same that I did at 23. Because when you have experience, experience makes you untouchable. You can have all the degrees in the world, but if you don't have experience behind it, you don't know how to make them degrees work. You may know how to start a business by going on Sunbiz and knowing how to register it, but when you start running one, it's different than just registering one. And that's what leadership is. And this month, I want to drive into your soul. You're going to be a great leader. You're going to take your world by being a leader. You're going to take your community 
by being a leader. You don't need anybody to endorse you. You don't need anybody to write you a check. You just need to be a good leader and people will find your influence. There are so many people waiting for a leader and I want to make sure that you develop and become the leader that the world is looking for. In Joseph in Genesis chapter number 37 verse number Seven. We talked last week about how he has this dream. God gives him a dream. Because God will always give you a dream bigger than you. Let's, let's reconcile that. Every dream God gives you will always be bigger than you. Any dream that's not bigger than you is not a dream that God gave. Because God will never give you a dream that you can accomplish on your own. seen it. Now he has his dream and he tells his father about his dream and his father's like uh, wait a minute you, you, you talking about verse number five third, verse number six he says listen to this dream I had we were binding sheaves of grain out of the field then suddenly my sheaf rose stood up while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. You do know a lot of people did not like Martin Luther King when he had his dream. They only loved Martin Luther King when he died. Because your dream will not be celebrated by everybody. Listen to this thing that I said. People may not see your value, but they sure better hear your value. Let me say it again. People may not see your value, but they should hear your value. Which means that if you do well long enough, the people that didn't see it will hear it. So here it is. Verse number nine, he says, then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me when he told his father as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I, your brothers actually come down, bow down to you? Um, his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Y'all, this is so powerful. The son goes to the dad and shares his dream. This text says the dad loved him. He, he was already favored more than the other kids. So what he does is he tells his dad and his brothers his dream and his father rebukes him, not because his father doesn't believe in the dream, but because the father was trying to teach him, you're telling people something too early. So you interpreted that rebuke as the father hating him, but in actuality, the father was covering him because he was releasing information prematurely. So the father rebukes him in front of the brothers, so the brothers say, yeah, you see, even daddy rebuked you, not knowing that daddy was just preserving him. Because daddy knew the brother's intents are much different than the father's intent. So now here, here's what happens. When, he, when, when now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks in Shechem. Come, I am going to send you them to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to them, go and see if all is well with your brothers in the flocks and bring word back to me. Then he sent them out to the valley. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they're grazing their flocks? They have moved from here. The man answered, I heard them say they're going down to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. When they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. You'll be amazed at how many people plan their plot because of your dream. Whenever you have a dream, you also have plotters. So here's what he says. They attempted to kill him and they, 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 and they seized him 
and they planned to throw him in one of the cisterns so that a ferocious animal would devour him. Y'all reading this? This weren't his cu this weren't a friend that did this to him. This was his own brothers. It weren't, it weren't outside kinfolk that did this to him. It was people that grew up with him that he shot basketball with, that he played hopscotch with, that's way before your time, that he played volleyball with, that he played Sega with, way before some of y'all time, that he played Super Nintendo, Mario Kart, all of these things that he was playing with, they all played them together, but when he said to himself, I got a dream that I'm bigger than this space, they ended up killing him. And I want to promise you one thing I've learned about leadership. It ain't the outside that's going to kill you. It's, it's, a lot of times people are talking about haters on the outside. The people that are hating you are not on the outside. They're sitting at your table. So here's what you and I can learn from this book of leadership. I've learned that education is so important and I think it's vital. But I learned education doesn't always teach us leadership. <laughs> this is going to be so helpful this morning. I want to first deal with, because there's a lot to unpack. Although some may have greater natural gifts than others, nearly all leadership skills can be learned and improved. You learn how to be a leader and you improve on being a leader. Now, some of you are in Joseph's situation. You're favored by your father. You're at a job where they give you favor over everybody. You're at a school where the teacher seems to favor you. This is what Joseph did not learn. When you receive what we call favor, you've got to learn how to manage it well. Because those that don't have it want what you have. And notice what the father did, because I didn't read it in this text. The father went even further to say, this is not a healthy thing to do. He said, I love, I love Joseph so much because I had him at an old age. I love you so much, I'm going to give you a coat of many colors. So now all the brothers are looking around like, you going to give him a coat? First you, first you give him food that we don't get, and now you're going to add insult to injury by giving him a coat that none of us have. When you know you got favor, you got to manage how you act differently. Because if everybody at the table sees that you have a coat and they don't, the number one thing they're going to want to do is kill the coat that's on you. And a lot of us want favor on the job, but when you are favored on the job, that means that people that see your favor will set up your assassination because of your favor. And you got to learn as a leader how to wear your coat and not show it off in front of everybody. And Joseph is walking around. Not only do I have my own special coat, I now have a dream that none of y'all got. And his brothers hated him because they could not handle the level of where he was trying to go. And I want to tell you something that all of you that are being prosperous and stuff, that I, want to, I want to really help you because I learned this the hard way. You cannot share your prosperity in every room. Because you awaken the idea in people who are not succeeding that something is wrong with them. And in order for them to justify what's not happening in their life, they got to kill you. Don't you tell everybody, oh man, I just got a call from such and such. They'll kill you. It's, this is why people find trusted circles that they share their wins with. Because if you share your win everywhere, 
you'll raise up enemies unnecessarily. So here's the other thing. Joseph was rebuked by his father because his father realized he was too hungry. If you are too hungry attempting to create purpose, be careful that you don't get poisoned. His father rebuked him because you're too hungry. And people who are hungry eat anything. You see people who are desperate to get that you mean, oh man, I want, I want to sell, I want to sell commercial building. What, what can I do? I want, man, I, I see how you sold this. I want, I want. And, and because they're so hungry for purpose, if you don't pay attention to the details, you eat poison. So here's this, leadership, Joseph did not know, is about offering something while you become a drink offering. Joseph learned the school of leadership by getting beat down by his brothers. Because there are some things you will not learn by a classroom, you'll learn by experience. Every leader has to go through things where you just learn by experience. That's what makes you tougher. That's what makes you wiser. That's what makes you more understanding. That's what broadens your bandwidth. So some of you who are like, man, I want God to use me and be great. My caution to you is, yes, pray that, but also know that in order for you to be great, the wounds got to be deep. So here it is. This is a very important thing. Joseph failed to realize this from his father. You are where you are because of who you chose not to listen to. You hear what I'm saying? You are, we, you and I, we are where we are because of who we chose not to listen to. Because in one season, what sounded like Joseph's father was being a rebuke was actually a protective thing. Because now look what happens a few verses later. His brothers didn't tell the dad. They made up within themselves. How are we going to kill him? And only one brother said, I'm not going to do that. Every group needs a Reuben that says, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to kill my brother. No, I'm not going to. Reuben said, y'all can go ahead and do it. I'm not going to do it. Y'all can go ahead and do it. But they all made up in their mind. And what daddy was working on was protecting them from the brothers. Because one thing daddy knows, he knows his children. How many of you got kids and you know your kids? You know which ones are capable of doing what and which ones are capable of not doing it. Daddy knew his children and he rebuked them to protect him. Now, here's something very interesting. This is a good one. Joseph did not know leadership is learning you don't know what you don't know. Leadership is learning you don't know what you don't know. This is why you need someone that is ahead of you who can tell you what you don't know. I remember uh, we started our church 2013, January, January 13, 2008. And three years in, our church was just doing some great things. And I called my pastor excited and said to him, you won't believe it. We just bought some land. Our church is three years old. We're doing three services. We're doing amazing. And he sat there. He heard me. He said, man, that's, that's all great, but you don't have a real church yet. I was so hot. What you mean I ain't got a real church? He said, you won't know 
what type of church you have until seven years in. Now, when you're Joseph, that sounds like you hating on me. That sounds like you baller blocking. I, I, I called one of my friends and said, you won't believe what this man said. He said, after seven years, I realized what type of church I had. And on my seventh year, I realized everything he said was true. My small success blinded me of someone who had experience. Let me help you with these seven things that I think are components to leadership that will make you a better leader and make I and you a better leader. Ooh, this is good. Enthusiasm is not wisdom. And just because you're excited about it doesn't mean you have wisdom about it. So let me give you these components so that you can go and eat chicken. Number one component of leadership is respect. You can't follow what you don't respect. I told a pastor friend of mine, because of my experience, he's bawling about, he's two years in the ministry. He was bawling about something. And I looked down and said, oh, that's normal. He was so hurt. And I was like, what you hurt by is normal. Because experience teaches you that. My young guy, Josh, who's leading at a church, and I said, your first year, what you need to do is love, listen, and learn. Because you can't make changes if people don't know you love them. Leadership is about respect. If you want people to follow you, they got to respect you. People don't follow what they don't respect. You can't make people respect you. You got to earn their respect. Want to be a good leader? Make sure people respect you. Number two, experience. Experience is important. My, my wife and I, we, we have four kids. And, and there are times they will not listen to us because they don't feel that we have the experience. It's all our kids. I didn't listen to my parents either. Because I thought I knew more. But they had the experience. How many of you ever think about some stuff your parents told you that you thought they were dead wrong about and now you have your own children you realize they were so right about it. Why? Because they had the experience. This is a big one, number three. Joseph learned the experience and we're going to talk about next week about having the advantage, how to manage having advantage over those that have a disadvantage because what good leadership will teach you is just because your brothers try to throw you in a pit, you still got to lead them. This is so good. Number three. Joseph had to learn emotional strength. You got to be a strong leader. We don't want to hear your problems. We don't even want to see it in your face. We want you to perform under pressure and play in pain. 
Guys, I just want to tell you, I was trying to prepare my sermon this week and a deal I lost some money on. And I just want, I can't really focus as my, you're like, well, Pastor, you should have handled that before you got up there. Because I didn't drive and get dressed, put my clothes on, leave my beautiful house, leave my AC to come outside to hear your problems. I came to see you perform. And I'm not insensitive about your pain and I'm not saying your life doesn't matter, but I'm simply saying that when you decide to take the responsibility and lead, I need you to be able to lead under pressure. I can't work today, guys, because my dog died. And, and, and that might be true, and that doesn't mean your dog is ineffective or your dog doesn't matter. We just want you to work. Now, if you need a day off, take the day off, but don't come here crying about your dog. And that sounds harsh because how is it that I'm paying you to do a job and you're stealing my time talking about your dog? It's about emotional strength. You have to have emotional strength. Leadership is critical because we live in a generation because we don't have emotional strength, we bleed out online. You got to have emotional strength. Are you online talking about your wife, your husband, because y'all had a problem at home? You do know, you know come, come closer, come closer. You, you do know, you, you do know, once y'all forgive each other, we still going to be side-eyeing you because we remember what you posted? You got to have the emotional strength. Because as a leader, there are going to be things you're not going to be happy with. But you got to have the emotional strength to know where to go. All right. This is the next one. It's called people skills. That's super important. People skills. Now, I must admit, this part is one, this is one, emotional strength, I'm pretty good at that. I'm, I'm very strong. Experience, I got quite a bit of that. Respect, I got a little bit of that. Emotional strength, people skills. See, I'm a straight shooter. If you know me, you know, like, he is straight to the point. Like, yo, I don't, I don't like it, I don't. That works for you, and it also hurts you, too. Right? Because... Because that's why I don't like mentoring people, because they want you to cuddle them. I'm a straight shooter. Like, that was dumb. That didn't make sense at all. At all. At all. Because that's how I treat me. Like, no, you missed it. D, you missed that. You blew that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't, don't lean on your fanfare. Don't lean on your pastor title. You messed that up. People skills is important because people will only follow you as much as they know you love them. People need to know they matter or whatever you believe in won't matter. People skills. You need to know about people because that matters. Because if you don't know about people, they won't follow you. People skills. You got to learn how to win people. Because if you don't win people, even though your information is good, they won't listen to it. You don't win people by telling them how good you are. You win people by listening to how good they are. People skills. Remembering facts about people win people. Charles was in the military. Michelangelo is a principal. Rebecca came from Indiana. She's a mental health counselor. These are things that matter. Demita came from Georgia. Husband's a car salesperson. GM. Details matter. Richard works at a hotel. He works at a good hotel too if you need discounts. <laughs> Peep 
people skills matter. You can have a master's degree, and if you don't have people skills, you have no business. I'm anointed, but if no one likes you, your anointing goes nowhere. People skills matter. There's a great book by Dale Carnegie that talks about um, how to win friends. You need to read that because that matters. You got to be able to walk in a room and win it. Because you don't got time to play because as a leader, you got to walk in a room and win it. You got to have people skills. If you're in an interview, an interview is not about your education. An interview is about your skills to sell me on the job. And I know a lot of anointed people that have no job because they have no people skills. When you go for a job, they're not hiring your resume, they're hiring you. Your resume just got them to get to meet you, but you're selling yourself. And you gotta have people skills to win people over. I'm shy. You ain't gonna be a good leader. Next one. Discipline. Discipline is not just about what time you get up. Discipline is also knowing what and what not to say. Joseph needed to learn discipline. I'm trying to get out of debt. You need discipline. You don't need a miracle service. You need discipline. Discipline is going to make the difference between those that have and those that have not. Somebody shout out discipline. Say it like you got some life. Say discipline. Say it like you ate something. Say discipline. How you going to buy that house? Discipline. How you going to move in different spaces? Discipline. Discipline. How many books are you reading? I ain't got no time. Your screen time says you're a liar. Discipline. How you manage multiple things at the same time. Discipline. Discipline. You and I have to have enough discipline to let people know that their desire of your time is your own time. And you determine how you spend your own time. Discipline. Last one is timing. Timing is everything. And timing is everything. Timing is everything. You got to know when the right time is. It's not always about just do you got it. You got to know the right time. Timing matters. Some things are not a matter of if God will, but it's a matter of timing. I, I, I will just be transparently honest when you bring it down just a little bit. People have always asked me, um, how come you don't like, like in a black church, African American church, they have this thing where people become, um, a, they, they, they oversee churches. Once you pass their church, then people start, um, running to the church that are successful and they want that church to mentor them. And people would always ask, well, why don't you do that? Because I would always say, it's not the right timing. Because what people do is they'll try to give you their timing. And, and you gotta be strategic to know when the right time is because you may miss what you're called to do because you didn't do it in the right timing. 
Because one thing that I'm very hard on is be like, why don't you do classes on this and this and that? And I waited a long time because I'm a big believer on you can't teach what you don't have fruit of. In the business world, some people will not respect you because you pastor the church. They'll say, well, that's not business. Even though there's business components to it, that's religion. But when you go outside in the real estate world and succeed, now you're proven you can succeed in both worlds. Then when you can open up a store, then you're proven you can succeed in other spaces. When you can have multiple rental properties throughout the state and in other states, now you're proven that you have fruit. Now, if they don't like your skin color, they'll listen to your content. Because there comes a level where it's not about color, it's about content. Because if you're dying, you don't care who operates on you. You just want to get healed. So don't rush your timing. Yeah, you may be waiting another two years to buy a home. That's okay. Don't join the rat race because everybody doing it. I feel like I, I saw somebody post online. I need to, I need, it's about timing. If, if you're going to be a leader, you got to be comfortable in your own timing. Because people will push you in their timing. Why don't you go on TV and, and be a national speaker and be on TV every day? Why? <laughs> that means that you become a national TV person. Number one, that means you give up your privacy. All right? Number two, that means you get invitations to travel and speak. Well, what if you don't like to travel and speak? You just defeated your purpose. And just because XYZ pastor is doing it doesn't mean that's your call. I got four kids, a wife. I don't want to travel around the country to speak and get an honorary. That's why I do real estate, because it comes to me. And it's way more than an honorary. But you got to know your timing. And you got to be a leader that is, that is comfortable in your own lane. And we all have to work on leadership. Because when you lead a church at this level, what you used to do at your last church don't work. You spend a lot more time sitting with people who are already doing it and saying, what can I do better? Because if you lead how you were leading, you will burn out and the church will burn too. So I want to challenge you during this I'm salty time. Discipline. This is the biggest discipline one. I know I'm probably going to lose 50 members after I say this. And I probably shouldn't say it, but I'm going to lose them. I know. I know it. I already know. We're going to have to lay off a whole bunch of people because I know it. Because this, is, this, this, this one is going to be like, they're going to be like, I can't believe he tried me like that. Discipline also on being on time. Yeah. We still got security at the church. We good. We good. Okay, we good. We good. We're good. Discipline on timing. To be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. And to be late is unacceptable. Let me say it one more time. To be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. And to be late it's unacceptable. I took my boys riding and I, I drilled it in their head. To be early is to be on time. 
To be on time is to be late. And to be late is unacceptable. If you want respect, you respect people's time. And I know oh, we, we just as a culture, we used to being late. Your lateness is canceling your blessing. She dope. Man, she's smart. He's eloquent. He's educated. I just can't trust his timeliness. And, and I know if I give him this project, will he bring it back to me on time? Because I'd rather go with someone less quality that I'll get it on time than to go with someone who's top quality but I won't get it on time. Timeliness. I'm done, y'all. Be salty. Be a great leader. Be a world changer. Father, I have communicated this message that you gave me weeks ago in a series of four on leadership. I hope it helps. Thank you for giving us the life of Joseph. His life speaks so richly to what I know leadership is. So God help us all become better leaders because our life rises and falls on our leadership. So Lord, I pray for those who don't know you at all that they would find themselves following you as their leader. You may be out here and you may be just living your own life and doing your own thing and, and you may even be in the sanctuary and you may just be leading your own life and trying to make things happen on your own and it doesn't work that way. Come and follow a leader, a leader of leaders in the person of Jesus Christ. If you're here in the sanctuary and you're like, Pastor, I, I am not saved and I need to get saved and I want to get right with God because I need to follow Him. I just want you to stand if that's you, Pastor. I'm not right with God. I need to get right with God. I want to agree with you. I'm not going to bring you forward. I just want to agree with you in prayer. And if you're online, you can indicate yourself as well by texting the word Jesus, 407-449-8884. Text the word Jesus. Life is about leadership, and when you stand before God, the question that you'll be asked is who was the Lord or who was the leader of your life? And if that's not him, I want to encourage you to make that decision right now. Ten seconds, we're praying. That's you, I want you to stand. Pastor, I need to get right with God. Five seconds, we're praying. Those of you that are watching online, I encourage you that may be watching this later on or the replay. You need leadership. You need leadership. Jesus is the greatest leader in the world. Thousands of years later, people are still following his leadership. His principles still remain true. He's the greatest leader in the world. Clap your hands if you receive that today.